This is the first video in a little series of videos on Garden Pond Basics. The aim is to help people that are thinking about building a pond for the first time or those looking to reinforce the knowledge that they already have. So I hope it's useful. This video is about selecting the location for your pond. G'day, my name is Kev and the aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain ponds without spending a fortune. I also have a website, ozponds.com, so feel free to check that out. As the real estate saying goes, location, location, location. It's the same with a pond. The single most important thing I think is that the pond is positioned in an area where you will get the most bang for your buck. The EPA estimates that on average, people spend 90% of their time indoors. Therefore, I think it's really important that you position the pond so that you can see and hear it from inside your house. I've got many ponds and almost every single one I can see or hear from inside the house. Don't worry so much about full sun, under trees, etc. These things can all be dealt with. This pond is in full sun. This pond sits under a Japanese maple. The courtyard is surrounded by fruit trees and silver birch. It gets plenty of leaf debris in the autumn. Sun and shade both have advantages and disadvantages. The advantage of the sun is that the plants in and around the pond can grow easier and you have more choices. The disadvantage can be that the water warms up more and you could experience more algae. The advantage of a shaded pond is that it can maintain a cooler temperature in summer, which can help keep algae at bay. The disadvantage is that you'll need to deal with excess leaf material. I like to try and create ecosystems and in nature, ponds exist in both shade and sun. Both are beautiful and all of the challenges are easily addressed. So let's quickly run through some of them. A common concern, a pond in full sun will create algae. It is true that algae like sun and warm water, but if we get our filtration right and develop a complete food chain with bacteria, plants, small amounts of algae, tiny organisms and larger organisms, the algae should never be dominant and just operate more in the background and not be a problem. The biggest concern in a shaded pond is dealing with the leaf material. Excessive leaf material can also cause algae as it releases a lot of nutrients into the water. Leaf material can also stain the water due to the tannins inside the leaves. And lots of leaves can also clog filtration systems. Skimmers, intake bays and negative edge systems are all great design elements that can help you manage leaf debris. I'll go into more details on these in a future video when I talk about the filtration options for a pond. Often in ponds under very large trees, tannins annoy some people. I don't mind them and I feel like they add to the overall ecosystem of a shaded pond. However, it is possible to remove them using charcoal filters. So the point is that you shouldn't let sun or shade influence the position of your pond. Think about where you'll get the most enjoyment. This is what I look at from my living room window. When I'm doing dishes in the kitchen, I look out into the courtyard. Both sides have a water feature. Here's the window from the sun slash reading room. Even when it's cold and miserable outside, I can still enjoy all the ponds. Even this container pond system, I don't really see it from the house, but it sits right next to the door, so I hear it when I'm sitting at the computer editing videos for YouTube. Now there is one place where you should avoid putting a garden pond, and that's a low spot. There's two reasons for this. Number one, low spots attract runoff. This seems counterintuitive to a lot of people because we want water in our pond. For large farm ponds, this makes sense. The capturing of water is the main aim. In our backyard ponds, we want clean, clear, healthy water. The farmer's main aim is to have water for his or her livestock or crops. We just want something that's pretty to look at and easy to maintain. The issue with runoff is that it picks up all kinds of nutrients and pollutants as it makes its way into the pond. 
the less nutrient and pollution we get inside our pond ecosystem, the easier it is for the filters to do their thing, keeping the water clean, clear and healthy. The second issue is groundwater. In low spots, the water table is often high. So if we're digging the pond into the ground, this can cause issues with the liner getting a bubble or even a hard shell pond rising up out of the ground. These are extreme cases and there are things you can do to help mitigate them from happening, such as under the liner or pond drainage systems. But in low spots, it can be difficult to naturally drain away the groundwater. So you become reliant on sump pumps to move the water on. This starts to get costly and therefore for a beginner, I say, just don't do it. A couple of other things to consider is utilities. Obviously you don't want to move power, water or gas lines, that can get expensive. Another thing I like to do before I start digging is find out what the local laws are in regards to ponds. Some areas will let you do whatever you want and others not so much. I prefer to correspond with the relevant authorities via email so that I have a paper trail if someone ever comes along and says, hey, you can't put that there. And if you can't go into the ground, that's okay. There's lots of ways to create an above ground pond. In the next video, I'll talk about different liners and options like rigid plastic or really anything that can hold water. If this video was helpful, I don't mind if you tickle the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching. See ya.